Good morning. morning. It's good to be back. Uh, Joanne and I were out in Iowa, and we experienced a worship service in the Presbyterian Church out there where Brad and Melinda, or Brad and Megan, and and Emma and Tyler go. But uh, I I like our worship service much better. Uh, They have a they have a nice service, uh, but. It's somewhat different than ours. Good morning. The Word of God connects today's readings. Jeremiah paints a beautiful image of the world, word being written on the very hearts of God's people, foreshadowing of the beginning of John's Gospel, where Jesus is described as the, as the living word, come to dwell within us. The psalmist declares the importance of the word as a source of understanding, wisdom, and guidance. Paul writes to Timothy about the word as a basis for sound teaching, reproof, and correction. In Luke, Jesus tells the parable of the persistent widow to teach us about patience, persevering prayer. Throughout these readings, God's word is revealed as the foundation of our relationship with God. Let us worship in all knowing and all worship and all merciful God as we join voices in a responsive call to worship. How beautiful is the word of the Lord. Through the Lord's precepts we gain understanding. The Lord is our God. We are God's people. Living Word, great teacher, lead us and guide us. Let us pray. Lord, everywhere we look, we see the imprint of your creative love. The wondrous works of nature show your majesty. As we gather today to celebrate your love and creation, keep us mindful that we are a part of that created order, meant to be stewards and not destroyers. Prepare us to work for you in ministries of peace and justice. Amen. Please stand if you are able and join in our opening hymn of praise, Come, We That Love the Lord. The act of confessing our sin is not simply a recitation of our faults and wrongs, but also an opportunity to receive God's mercy and share in that abundant grace. Confident of God's love for us, let us offer our prayers of confession. 
first in silence. Let us pray. Amen. Let's join in the printed prayer of confession. Let us pray. From the least of us to the greatest, Lord, we want to know you. We yearn to follow where you lead us. We need your guidance. But even as we listen for your direction, other voices compete for our attention with teachings that suit our desires. Our thoughts drift so far from your truth that fables and fantasies begin to seem real. Holy One, open our hearts and minds by your Spirit. Convince, rebuke, and encourage us only you can. Teach, correct, and inspire us in the ways of your salvation. Amen. When we cry out, God helps us without delay. Do not lose heart, for the Lord forgives your iniquity and remembers our sins no more. children want to come forward for the children's message? Good morning. I wanted Clara and Dana to come forward as well. We, I have a couple of questions for you guys. You know how much I love your performance, right? And you do such a great job with that whenever we have a celebration up in town in Clarion. So I'm going to ask you, you know, what make you do it that well? Practice again. Oh, yeah. practice again and again and again. You, you, uh, do you feel it like you go and your parents take you? And of course I know because I did that. I didn't do it as much as, um, you know, the children mom would have been doing. Uh, you know, she would just like your mom will take you or your dad. But I was very busy. But I did it a few times. And my goodness, you know, I'm... You know, I, because a lot in my mind, I want to do other things. So it has been like a pressure. So, but you got to do that. How many times? Again and again and again. Can we all, all say that again and again and again? That's exactly what's going to happen to that. And Nora, you're going to be getting into Well, you already got into this, right? You practice a lot. How many times? All the times. See, I'm telling you again and again and again. Well, that's what the story of today is. Is uh, Jesus himself giving us that parable, that example of prayer. And what we mean by again and again, the same thing with prayer. It's really practice. We need to pray again and again and again. And not to give up. So let's look at that story. Jesus, Jesus is talking about a widow in front of unjust judge who didn't want to listen to her. Judge must be loving, compassionate, fair, at least fair, right? But this judge wasn't. And this was a widow and needed help. So 
just think of it in the modern time, all right? Like a woman with difficulty, with problem, probably with, um, you know, her family or with some people who are oppressing her, not giving her rights, right? And we're going to see that in a funny way in this uh, video clip. Pray a lot, not to give up. Never give up on prayer, okay? If, if God doesn't answer today, God may answer tomorrow. And God may never answer, but we'll continue praying. Because God's not answering can be an answer, all right? So I remember when I was young and I wanted, I wanted this car. I love this car. I want this car. I didn't get that car, okay? And that was God's answer because God knows that maybe that car could have been a big trouble for me, all right? So even if God doesn't answer a prayer, actually God is answering a prayer in a sense. Amen? Let us pray. Gracious God, gracious God, we thank you because you are a loving Father. And you are not a harsh judge. But even if a harsh judge answer to the widow when she keep persistent and keep asking and keep requesting, and you tell us, ask, you will be given. Meaning, continue to ask. Continue praying. Pray without ceasing. The Bible teaches us. So help us to do just that. We thank you for those wonderful kids. And I pray, Lord, that you, they may continue to learn again, again, and again about prayer. We thank you because you always listen to our prayers. In Jesus' name, and let everyone say, Amen.
Let us pray. Living God, help us so to hear your holy word that we may truly understand, that understanding we may believe, and believing we may follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The scripture reading today comes from Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had any respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my accuser. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice. So that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not grant, and will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, he will find faith on earth. The word of the Lord. I uh, just wanted to remind you of these last words from uh, this parable. Though I have no fear, the words of that unjust judge, though I have no fear of God and no respect of, for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, so that was the judge saying, the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says, and will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. As you probably have heard when I ask those wonderful hard and work practicing kids as they prepare for performance and we all did it whether we study for a test or um, practice for uh, a class or, or, or for a celebration we do it again and again and again practice does it. We all know that. We advise kids about that. This is really all what is today's lesson is all about. It's simply to remind us that prayer need to be without ceasing and without frustration, without giving in or giving up. Yesterday we had such a great uh, day of learning and day of uh, prayer and day of focus and uh, God willing the two sessions and two churches are going to get into 40 days of prayer. We invite all of you to pray, to lift up our voices. Um, as Presbyterian, I myself guilty of being too rational, too intellectual. Perhaps it's about time to add 
That's nothing wrong about that. It's God's gift to us. But also to add to it that kind of unique spirituality about connecting with our higher power more and more and praying without ceasing again and again and again. When we do something repeatedly, sometimes we need to do that and it is the only way to get, to get it right. Take the woman in this parable Jesus tells. She is seeking justice. But you may remember I told you a lot before stories about women in the Middle East. Particularly 2,000 years ago at the time of Jesus. At that part of the world. Women in general were like considered second class citizens. They were put down all the time. And I told you one time a story about women who are widows because the society were oppressing them more and instead of helping them more because they were looked down upon because they lost their husbands. And every move is counted. They're being put under telescope. That's not fair. Do you hear? Do you see what is this woman is against? But even worse, she went to that somebody that's supposed to help her out. To the judge of the town or of the city. And unfortunately, that judge was powerful, but also he was corrupt. We don't know why he didn't listen to her. Could it be that he was having that man prejudiced to view against women and against a widow? Could it be? Could it be that he is too corrupt uh, to defend or to advocate for her because he probably was more uh, concerned about that powerful defendant? Maybe her the, the, the guy who oppressed her or caused trouble to her is another powerful guy in the city and he doesn't want it to get into that. We don't know. The Bible doesn't tell us why. But what we know for sure that the woman kept going back even knowing that this is a corrupt and unfair judge she kept going back and continue to be persistent in her request and asking. Again and again and again, she comes to the judge to push her case and to have her day in court until he finally looked at her case and agreed to take it on and to uh, do justice for her cause. Jesus tells this story to teach us about prayer. If this judge, as corrupt and as ruthless as he is, is still grant justice to the rel relentless woman, how much more will God, who is gracious and kind, respond to the needs of those who come to him, to God, in prayer? Prayer, brother and sister, is not a magic thing. Prayer requires requires great persistence. Sometimes we pray and we say, we pray, we pray, we pray, but it feels like God is not answering. And the simple answer for that, as I said to the kids, don't give up. Don't give up, just keep praying. Keep praying. Even God's not answering could be an answer. It could be teaching moment for me, for you, for all of us, to teach us patience, to prepare us, to maybe direct our prayer. Like, okay, I know this part. I want you to pray for God's kingdom, right? Jesus said that, right? For God's kingdom. Ask first for God's kingdom and all of that. God knows many of our prayers, but sometimes he wanted to redirect 
to adjust our prayers and to teach us and put us in that beautiful teaching moment. Sometimes we raise our voices, we cry out, even most of the times, but sometimes nothing happens. That sometimes we get allured by the devil to give up. The allure of giving up. For some people, believe it or not, they feel it's much easier to give up. Give up completely on God. Give up on the church. Give up on even their own life. Simply because they can't accept the fact that prayer needs persistence. Jesus assures us today that the one to whom we pray is gracious and merciful, loving and faithful. Today is a story meant to encourage, not to frustrate, to encourage us during such time when we are allured to giving up, as if Jesus wants to tell us, trust me, I am a fair judge, I am a loving father, trust me, sometimes Perhaps that's what we wanted to do. To pray with confidence, with trust, no matter what. To wait for the Lord. We talked about that the last couple of Sundays, again and again and again. Wait for the Lord. Be of good courage and wait for the Lord. There is no secret recipe for prayer. No magic formula. Just persistence. Just focus and commitment and discipline again and again and again. Perhaps it's no coincidence that in the two books that we studied as session, the first one, Unbinding the Gospel, Real Life Evangelism, the end of the book gives an instruction to have individual prayer for 40 days. The same book that we read about the sailboat church, and I wish all of you to read it. I wish all of you to read it. If you're interested, I can send you the recorded book. It is all recorded, and it's all free. And all what you need to do is just upload it in your uh, telephone, and then while you're driving, while you are going on a bigger trip, just listen to it. It's very amazing, and it's very empowering. And it addresses current situation in all of the churches. Don't you think, don't think that you're unique. You're not. You remember what it came uh, after the, or during the COVID? It's called the pandemic fatigue. This is like a disease. <laughs> it, it, you know, the COVID killed some people physically and got people sick. But the majority of its impact is in these two words, pandemic fatigue. That's what the churches are going through. And we are not alone. So I wanted I want us to think, and I want us to get back into that persistence in praying, in love, in humility, in acceptance, in waiting. Prayer is about asking, seeking, knocking, and waiting over and over and over again. There is no secret recipe, brother and sister, and no mysterious or magic formula. It's only through persistence. Keep praying. Keep praying. Individually and as a community. The writer of the Hebrews provided us with this amazing verse. And I didn't have any intention to include this until the last minute yesterday in this sermon. And it, it kind of fit wonderfully. And it is very encouraging to me, to you, I hope. Hebrews telling us these words, and we want each one of you, the writer of the Hebrew says, 
And we want each one of you to show the same diligence so as to realize the full assurance of hope to the very end, not to a, you know, a small period of time, not to the moment we feel like heaven is, is made of iron. Some prophet even said that at one time of, of, of frustration. It's okay. But then you realize, you remember, we want each one of you to show the same diligence so as to realize the full assurance of hope to the very end so that you may not become sluggish but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. So there is a promise out there. And the promise is ask and you will be given. That's a promise. And the prophet in the Bible took a lot. There were a lot of promises given to the prophets. And I will give you an example of one of those. One of those faithful, very faithful young men who was promised, promised a life of dignity, uh, of ownership, uh, of kingship, to the point that his parents and his brothers will come and bow in front of him. And yet what happened? What happened for so many years till that dreams came to being? I'll, I'll talk a little bit more when the time come for me to quote. Last week, we quoted Paul's making of himself an example. You see, these words of the Hebrew telling us that you may not become sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. And last week we talked about Paul's message to Timothy. And he advised him the same thing. He told him to imitate Christ and to imitate Paul himself in the way he suffered for Christ. So he told Timothy, remember Jesus Christ raised from the dead. And what does that mean? Meaning that Christ, before being raised from the dead, was crucified. He was humiliated. He went through all kinds of suffering and pain, but he was raised from the dead. And he was not just a God. So you say, wow, that was God. Well, God, that God was also fully human. It wasn't a play, otherwise we think that that was magic. It wasn't. Jesus was praying at Gismani, at that mountain, and the Bible says that his, he was sweating. And his sweat was drops of blood. And that was reality, real. Psychologists say when you are under huge stress, some people can drop, instead of tears, blood comes from their eyes. So Paul says to Timothy, remember Jesus Christ raised from the dead, a descendant of David, meaning fully divine, fully human. That is my gospel, Paul says, for which I suffer hardship, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. 2 Timothy 2, 8 to 9. Reminding him of the faith of his mother, grandmother, and the suffering of Jesus and the suffering journey of Paul, his mentor. That's exactly what the words in Hebrew is telling us. So maybe we get encouragement by thinking of the journey of our parents, grandparents, uh, great faithful men and women that shared in the building of this church. And you all know whom I'm talking about. His picture is out there. You need to think about that. You need to Think of, of, of good, great people who gave example in their life and in their giving and in their worship and in their prayers. So we can be encouraged. Let's talk about another biblical example which I already referred to. A young man with big dreams. Joseph faced a situation that is in contrast 
to these dreams. He dreamed that his brother and sister's mother and father will bow in front of him, predicting that one day will become a, in a high place. And yet, he found himself at the bottom of the dry pit. And instead of sitting on a throne, he found himself in slavery and servitude. And instead of enjoying power and freedom, he found himself in the presence. And we sometimes feel that way. We get disappointed that we get tangled in a web of difficult situations, health problems, natural disasters, loss, loneliness, poverty, brokenness, separation, and conflict. And sometimes we are allured to giving up. Please don't. As we have seen in Joseph's story, the tougher the challenges, the greater the glory. All of these things that seem a contradiction of God's promise will turn into glory if we hold on faith and hope. If we become persistent in our prayers and be patient enough to wait for the Lord. In today's lectionary from 2 Timothy, Paul also encourages his disciple Timothy not to lose heart. He says, as for you, and I, I feel it is for me, for you too. As for you, Pisca people, as for you, be super in everything. Endure suffering. Do the work of an evangelist. Carry out your ministry fully. Whether you have a leader or you don't. Whether we see progress or not, we need to keep hope. We need to hold and fulfill our calling. I know you're not every one of you a minister, not every one of you elders, though many of you are. But as even as a member of the church or a worshiper, this is our obligation to keep hope and to keep handing example to our kids. Another verse also in the same, he tells Timothy, it's like, like we said before, you know, sometimes we look at bad examples in the community and say, well, but they're still thriving and they're rich and they're powerful, even though with all the evil they do. Well, the Bible and Psalms tell us, hang in there, hang in there, don't envy those people. So he, he tells Timothy the same thing. He says, but wicked people and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving others and being deceived. But as for you, continue on what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned. Second Timothy 3. 13 to 14, 2 Timothy 4 and verse 5. So going back to the gospel again, gospel story of this persistent widow, we should be encouraged to keep praying and praying and praying again and again and again with faith that our lives are in God's hands and with hope in God's coming green when all will be well and all will be whole. Our unceasing prayer for others must continue. Our prayer for the world must continue, no matter what. Continue praying for yourself, continue praying for your neighbor, and be in anticipation and in a waiting mood that the Lord will listen, is listening and will answer. Have you heard about the five means of grace? These are prayer and fasting. These are worship, Bible study, and giving. These are the practices that the gospel tells us. Salvation is free. But these are the means of fulfilling your grace and fulfilling your salvation. The more we worship, the more we begin to grasp the height and the depths and the breadth of God's love. 
The more we study, the more we understand God's faithfulness. The more we serve, the more we resemble the model of our faith, Jesus Christ, who served God and served others with great abundance. The more we give, the more we comprehend that self-giving love is at the very heart of God's life. Brother and sister, these are the things to do again and again and again. When the church is at its best, pointed in the right direction, it gives us an opportunity to grow in prayer, to grow in worship, to grow in study, and grow in service, and growing in giving. We grow in these things, but by practice and by persistence. I'm not quite sure if you're into it, but this is my last piece, a clip from another parable that Jesus gave, and again, we're putting it so that the kids will also can enjoy it. So let's watch it, and that will be the closing part of um, But believe it or not, I remember that about my own family. And I remember a couple of people came as guests, and I know this is hard to believe, but my daddy had to go out and to borrow some flowers and to cook a nice meal for them. Uh, just simply using the flour and whatever oil we have at home. And, and he cooked a nice, beautiful, one day I'll make it for you, nice, beautiful cake that was so delicious and nutritional. Yes, this is, can happen uh, in other places. And Jesus was taken from the environment true stories. But the idea here is really to trust, to trust to ask, and to be vulnerable enough to ask, to ask each other, but above all, to ask God for help. All right, uh, with these words, brother and sister, let's continue our worship. And if we believe in these, let's affirm our faith by reciting the Apostle Creed while we're standing. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended unto hell. The third ray rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quake and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. All right, let us pray. Gracious and wonderful God, we do thank you for your grace, for your love, for your mercy. We're not going to see his own prayer. We pray for our churches, we pray for our community, for, we pray for God's people who are experiencing hardship, we pray for God's people who are in the hospital right now, we pray for our sister Kathy and her husband Rich and her sister May, Margie, um, we pray Lord that um, Miss Alice Brown as well uh, be fully and completely healed and delivered. We pray, Lord, for people who start to get sick again with COVID that may be protected, that the community may be protected, that we may be there for them, pray for them and with them, and not to give up or to be allured to giving up on prayers. Lord, in your mercy. We continue praying for the world that you love. Continue praying for our worship time together. We continue praying for the peace and the justice that many people around the world, particularly in Ukraine, crying out for justice, crying out for mercy. We pray, Lord, for our country as it struggles with economy and, and with downfall and the stock market and our pension and all of these things help us to trust and to stand on a solid rock that you provide, that we are in much better shape than many others, that you will continue leading us 
and that you'll continue protecting your church and your community. Gracious God, we thank you because you always listen to our prayers. When we pray in the wonderful name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, how be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not in temptation but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue worshiping God together and this is a time to um, uh, call for our offering and tithes and thank God for your faithfulness and for continue depositing that in the plates and let's sing the doxology together. If you're able, would you please stand? Would you please join me in this prayer of dedication in your bulletin? Gracious God, you have granted us wisdom, understanding, and knowledge for greater than that of any teacher. You have given us love and grace freely from your abundance. As you have shared your gifts with us, we share these gifts with you, that all the world may know you, as you have fed us, we offer our hands to our service in praise and in thanksgiving. Amen. And our hymn of dedication, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Brothers and sisters, these words of this beautiful hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, which is full of reminder about encouragement and not to give up in, on prayer. Go with it. I'll leave it to you. I'll take it with you. And trust in your prayer and in your connection with our wonderful Lord and Savior. And may the love of Christ and the great love of our Father 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit continue to be with us from now and forever. Amen.